Hey, what's up guys? Today, this incredibly filthy 2003 Chevy Suburban is going to get an extreme makeover and you are not going to believe how good it looks when I'm done. Well, before I get ahead of myself, there's going to be a ton of work to do here because this Suburban is in rough shape. As the owner's daily driver, it's had to endure daily trips down wet and mucky gravel roads for the past few weeks and that's resulted in so much dirt getting caked on that you can't even see out the back window. Yeah, although I'm not sure what the story is on the inside where the carpets are full of gross stains and all the way in the back we've got some pizza chilling here for who knows how long so buckle up guys and make sure you're subscribed to the channel as this one's gonna be good. All right guys, well as I get started on the Suburban today, there's no question that the pressure washer is going to get quite a workout. And if you're asking yourself why the owner didn't wash it during the nice weather we had recently, well, it wouldn't have done much good. Considering the roads he was taking to work every day were mucky and the roads all around the city were too, it would have been dirty the second he left the car wash. So I totally get why people let their vehicles get this dirty through the mucky stretches. And in fact, I'm the same way as I'm not about to waste time cleaning my truck only for it to be filthy the next time I leave the house. That being said though, throughout the winter I do make a point of capitalizing on the colder stretches and making sure I get all the road salt off regularly. Now these giant rims with their huge offset make getting the inside barrel clean quite a bit tougher as I can't get the pressure washer in tight enough so I actually had to reach my hand in there and loosen up the mud and grass that was stuck in behind each of the spokes though when I went in for a final inspection after rinsing things off again I did find that giant clump of mud that I missed. Moving over to the driver's side wheel now and again I'm going to have to be really thorough to make sure I get all the mud in the inner barrel sprayed out but one thing that you guys don't know is that of all the lifted trucks that I've done or vehicles with larger aftermarket wheels on them nearly every single one had the wheels rubbing on the inner fender or the front bumper somewhere when you turned the wheels sharply so basically they were too big for the vehicle but for whatever reason that doesn't stop people I just always find it funny.
Now as I spray out the door jams, if you've ever wondered why I do this after the underside, well it's because there's always a possibility of blasting dirt from the underside up onto the running boards of a vehicle, so this way I can easily take care of that during this step. Now with some of my car shampoo in my wash bucket, I'll get to work on the contact wash portion of the detail, and not something I mention all the time, but I always use the two bucket method when I wash any vehicle, which means having one bucket with soapy water and one bucket to rinse your wash mitt in. What that does is allow you to just work panel by panel, rinsing your mitt after each one so that you're always touching the paint with your wash mitt as clean as possible. Alright, well after removing a bunch of plastic trim and then unbolting the second row seats, I'll get them removed so I can clean everything easier, and after doing so, I can say that I find it super interesting how a manufacturer like Chevrolet can make an intelligently designed seat in 2003, and then 15 years later make the abomination that is the Traverse, which has some of the worst designed seats I've ever seen, among other things. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but as I get a better sense of what I'm dealing with here, these carpets are reminding me an awful lot of the Cadillac Escalade that was abandoned on a gold mine. The inside of that vehicle was horrendous and quite a bit worse than this one, so I've linked the video for you guys if you want to check it out. And just like last week, the supports on this tailgate are toast, so I had to find something to prop it open with and ended up using the handle from my floor jack as it was nice and sturdy, though I still didn't love being underneath this thing today because if it gave way, this tailgate would crush me pretty quick. Now as I vacuum the carpets here, I have to say that it's so, so much easier to vacuum carpets with a longer pile like what's in this Suburban here, and it's really too bad that you just can't find carpets like this in vehicles anymore, even if you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. I guess all the tech people want in their vehicles these days has to come with a trade-off, but as a detailer, it's sad to see.
Well, here's something that I've never seen in any other vehicle that I've ever detailed, and that's a piece that folds down from the back seat of the second row seat to cover the third row footwell. I guess that might be useful if you took the third row out and needed a little bit of extra flat cargo room, but it does make me wonder why I've never seen this before. I guess that probably means it wasn't a very well received idea and no other manufacturers ever did it. Okay, well I'm going ahead and repeating the process here as I think I could make it look a little bit better yet, but given the age of the vehicle and how long the stains have likely been here, I'm not expecting perfection today, though I am going to try to get as close to that as possible. Now for those of you who happen to enjoy detailing your own vehicle and are overwhelmed by the amount of choices there are when it comes to detailing products, well let me help you out with that. I've had all my products formulated and designed to be incredibly effective. I'm not trying to use fancy marketing gimmicks or sense of the month to try to trick you into buying something low quality. What I sell over at DetailGeekAutoCare.com just works plain and simple. And you can see that each and every week as I detail these incredibly dirty vehicles. I've got a few bundles on the site where you can get pretty well everything you need to detail your vehicle like a pro, so feel free to give them a look. Okay, well not to be forgotten are these carpet sections on the doors and I'd honestly love to know why Chevy did this. They certainly aren't functional in any way so it must have been purely an aesthetic design choice which again is very curious to me. This is all the nasty water sucked out of the Suburban today and let me tell you, it really stunk. Well here's an area of the vehicle that I don't typically film but it's going to be cleaned the same way as all the rest of the plastic trim in here and that's with my all purpose cleaner and the steamer, though I do always clean the weather stripping around all the doors as well since they're usually pretty dirty too.
Here's another area I don't film too often and that's the seat brackets or seat rails which are almost always super gross and full of sticky goo from food and drinks being spilled but it never ceases to amaze me how good of a job APC and the steamer does and just how quickly it can make something look brand new again. Well, since these leather seats are really, really dirty, I've decided to steam them today rather than using my leather brush as the dirt looks to be really embedded. And once I've got them all clean, I'll use some of my leather conditioner to rejuvenate them, but it's also got a really nice new leather scent to it that I just love. Okay, with the interior clean now, it's time to dress and UV protect all the plastics in the vehicle. And for that, I use 303's Aerospace Protectant as it's going to leave everything with that freshly detailed look when it dries and it should last for about four to six weeks. I've got the link down in the description for you guys if you're interested. Okay, one of the last steps on this detail now is to clean all the glass and there's a lot of it on this Suburban, but honestly this step only takes about 10 minutes using my glass cleaner and waffle weave towel. And for those of you wondering, yes the glass cleaner is absolutely safe to use on tinted windows as there's no ammonia in it and it does a fantastic job cleaning glass and leaving it streak free.
All right guys, well after 11 hours of hard work, all the mud is gone and this Suburban is looking like a completely different vehicle. And I gotta say, I'm really digging the green paint on this thing. It looks pretty good. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.